it's always very important to look at the transactional data, you know, the behavioral data, the previous data. That will inform your assumptions, but then cap it off by asking the customer. Coffee's for closers only. So we've established my proposal to stand in principle. Now we're just haggling over price. <laughs> Let's see how much we're going for on eBay. I mean, it's the same as Dunkin' Donuts. Cost 15 times the price. This podcast is sponsored by Epic Conjoint. Conjoint analysis is the most powerful market research tool for pricing, and Epic Conjoint is the simplest and fastest Conjoint software I've seen. If you want to learn more, reach out to them at epicconjoint.com, tell them Impact Pricing sent you, and if you end up buying from them, I'll throw in free access to the Conjoint course to get you up to speed quickly. Reach out to Epic Conjoint today. Welcome to Impact Pricing, the podcast where we discuss pricing, value, and the measurable relationship between them. I'm Mark Stiving. Today, our guest is Matt Johnston. And here are three things you want to know about Matt before we start. He is the CEO of Epic Conjoint. He started out his career as an analyst, meaning he's probably pretty good with spreadsheets. And my favorite thing about Matt, he was a pricing analyst for Comedy Central in New York. <laughs> Welcome, Matt. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Mark. Delighted, delighted to be here. Uh, yeah, yeah. God, that brings back memories. Um, in fact, you know, when I think about my pricing career, uh, in, in the main, it's it's uh, yeah, it started it started back in Comedy Central as I priced airtime uh, with Comedy Central. We were slap bang in the middle of Manhattan. Um, very much a, a work hard, play hard. Uh, uh, atmosphere, but uh, yeah, I learned a lot. I had a great boss there, and um, yeah, fascinating, fascinating sector to work in and pricing. Nice. So, a young kid in Manhattan working on Comedy Central, that's got to be a great job. Yeah, um, well, look, it's a, well, actually, my next job was probably uh, depends how you look, it was even better. It was actually pricing stocks uh, as an equity analyst for, for, for JP Morgan on Wall Street. Um, so yeah, uh, from, from rags, rags to riches in, yeah, I, in a couple of years, uh, and look at that, uh, you know, I did that for about two and a half years and then realized, you know what, I, 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 you know, I was, I was selling my soul to, to the street and, uh, I'd rather add value uh, in other forms, uh, you know, working back in private companies again and, um, you know, bringing yeah. my skills. Nice. Generate value well, that way. So before we jump into the real content, I just want to say thanks for being an impact partner and especially thanks for your help in creating the new conjoint course that we put up. Uh, you guys were you hugely helpful for us. Yeah. Look, it was our pleasure. Uh, it was a great, great exercise for us to do because it, you know, it, it kind of really helps us focus. You know, we, we, we go through a lot of demonstrations and, and, you know, they're, they're, they're engaging, but I have to say the, 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 you know, the exercise of, of you know developing the course uh, um, uh, collaboration with your good self uh, was uh, yeah it was a real learning experience for us too and helped us kind of really fine tune our thoughts on uh, on you know where epic what what the value epic epic really brings to the table and uh, you know where where we want to take it you know where the journey we want to go on with, nice uh, partners nice. Uh, like your good self. So let's let's start back at the beginning. How did you get into pricing? How did I mean did did Comedy Central just say, hey, we need a pricing analyst, come join us? Or did something else get you into pricing? Yeah, actually it's a, it's a, it's a funny story. We literally I, I I graduated with a master's uh in epic economics from University College Dublin in, in Ireland. And back then, I mean, so I'm talking about the early 90s. Um you know, it was a fact of life. You you emigrated. There was no, there was absolutely no jobs uh, coming out with kind of analytical skills here uh, in, in Ireland. So, yeah, you went to the UK, US, Australia, even the continent. Anyone who had decent French or German went to those countries. Um, so yeah, we pretty much finished the last exam and jumped on the first plane uh, out out of Ireland and landed in New York. Um, and it, 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 you know, the original intention was try and find some financial an, an analysis roles. Um, so, you know, apply to a lot of the banks, uh, investment companies and, and, and whatnot. But, uh, I remember the, the kind of the first real bite I got from a, from a recruiter, 
uh, I'll never forget, he said to me, um, I, yeah, look at a, f a financial analysis, analysis role with uh, an entertainment company. And, and, you know, me being green eared, green behind the ears and, you know, doe eyed, new to the whole scene of entertainment. We didn't really have that much in terms of entertainment in Ireland at the time, save for the pubs. Um, the first thought that came into my mind was, uh, oh, my God. Um, you know, how can I tell my mom I, I work for Playboy? <laughs> um, <laughs> how am I going to break that news? <laughs> but as it transpired, uh, it ended up in Comedy Central, which was you know, even much better. Um, uh, and that kind of kicked off. Yeah, it was a pricing role, um, literally in, a, in, in on the ground floor. I don't uh, know if I've ever met anybody whose first job was a pricing role. That is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Look, I was, I was looking. Um, uh, David, David Epstein took a punt on me. He was my boss, and uh, yeah, did did it for two and a half years, and then um, kind of moved there from there within the company into finance, um, uh, and then that then kind of was a springboard uh, into that uh, equity analyst role uh, with J.P. Morgan, um, and effectively, you're pricing, you're pricing stocks. Uh, so you're right. doing a lot of analysis, fundamental analysis work, you know, spreadsheet work, balance sheets analyzed, but also talking to, it was amazing the, the exposure we got, talking to sea levels in these companies. Like the, we, I, and and the, the, the beauty of it was it was actually, the sector I was covering was media and entertainment. So, you know, I was talking to News Corp, Sky, um, New York Times company, uh, Tribune company, fantastic uh, companies in, in, nice. the, in the US. Yeah. Nice. Well, let's jump forward. And, and how did you either come up with the idea or why did you start Epic Conjoint? Yeah, good question. So um, I guess, you know, just jumping forward a few roles, I, I ended up uh, as a head of pricing for. Uh, one of the major uh, mo uh, telecom companies in, in Europe. Uh, O2 was primarily mobile uh, at the time. Um, uh, O2 it was called, and it was that was bought then subsequently by Telefonica, which is number two or three in the world um, in telco in telco land. Um, so I it's that that and that that's where I got introduced to conjoint analysis because. You know, the size, the size of the bets we were making in terms of pricing, you know, we were talking a couple of million subscribers, you know, small beans in the context of the US, uh, granted, but nevertheless, in, in the Irish context, it was a lot. That was, you know, so, a, you know, a, a decimal point in the wrong place or, you know, the, 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 the consequences of, of, of getting something wrong where, you know, could, could be catastrophic. Um, uh, and that's where Conjoint came onto my radar um where you know where we managed to uh you know for the big the big risk decisions like you know implementing price increases or refreshing the portfolio the product portfolio this is you know we we did manage to persuade the c-level and particularly the cfo to release uh, enough funds to to pay an agency to come in who had the expertise and conjoint um, and 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 conduct a conjoint project for us. Um, okay, would, can you can you tell us how much it cost approximately? Give us a range oh, of what I you think you paid. Yeah, uh, but, but, you know because they had you know the agencies there weren't that many in the market. You know I don't think we ever paid less than fifty thousand, probably in dollar terms, euro terms, roughly. Right. Roughly the same, fifty thousand. Um, but the but the problem was it wasn't even the budget. The problem was is is you know the the bad the, the frustration the the amount of time we had to invest in. It wasn't like writing a research brief and handing it to the agency. There was a huge investment had to be put in in terms of designing the, the conjoint survey with the agency because. Yeah, well, as we found out, really wasn't their expertise. You know, they weren't pricing experts. They weren't product experts. You know, they were, they weren't familiar with the nuances of our products and the and the competitors' part and the market in general, the telco market. So, it, it was a painstaking and long exercise, and it turned out to be a big distraction. And and you know, the handful of times we actually got to con con uh, conduct a conjoint. Um, that's it, and and then the, the the from the from the start from the design through all the way through the results, you know, two to three months, which 
which is an eternity, in, in, yeah. in, definitely in telecom ro- world. Um, so, would, would you would you say it's fair to say that that you guys had the expertise on the market, on the products, on the features and the attributes and the levels, but you didn't really know conjoint and how to put together a study. And the agency had expertise in conjoint, but they really didn't know the market or the attributes or the levels. And so somehow we're trying to jointly figure this out. And that's what drove the timing. Yeah, no, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. And you know, the, the, you know, I hear, you know, now when we sit with clients and we do conjoint, but they're like, oh my God, you know, this, you know, I, I can remember doing those those long pen, painstaking. Uh, conjoint products in the past with with agencies and you know you know once it was baked that's it you couldn't change it you know you couldn't you couldn't revise you couldn't uh you couldn't start again you know there wasn't that agility it was it was literally a project um like an it project you know taking two to three months it's um so so that was the scary part and uh yeah so those are you know the limitations the amount of time invested the, the the budget required to do it um they yeah it was it was it was an arduous process and uh you know as we since found out the agencies don't even like doing conjoint because it's a big manual task for them as well um and uh they would prefer as one agency told me we preferred you know we could do the amount of time it takes to do one conjoint we could do 10 market sizing studies um, and the yield on a market size and so is much better than uh, on a conjoint on a man, man, man hour terms. Uh, so even they don't like to, to do the conjoints. Um, so yeah, it was, yeah, it was two, two kind of disconnected parties, um, trying to figure it out. And, you know, sometimes these things can go wrong. So where was your big aha? Because if I, I'm going to summarize Epic for you, so you don't have to brag, right? The thing I love about Epic is that it's simple it's fast and it's inexpensive, right? So, so I think it's great, but where was the big aha that said, oh, we don't have to do it that way. We could go do it this other way that's easier, faster, less expensive. Yeah, yeah, good question. So I guess fast forward in another couple of years, um, I was head of group pricing for a Qatari telecom company. Um, so I was based in the Middle East, lived in Qatar. Uh, and we, this company had operations all over the Middle East, uh, North Africa, Southeast Asia. So a lot of weird, weird and wonderful places. Um, and, and that brought, from a pricing perspective, that brought amazing challenges. Like, you know, so one of our markets was the Maldives, believe it or not, 600,000 subscribers, or Palestine, 600. And then our biggest market was Indonesia, 65 million subscribers. So you can imagine, and, 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 Indonesia was like day trading in, in even in telco land products and promotions and whatnot. So, you know, massive, massive uh, risk in terms of making mistakes. It was all very manually done. Um, and and what I what I really wanted to do was bring some automation and rigor into the pricing process, the you know the pricing governance process. Uh, uh, so you know you know where these kind of big bets. Uh, pricing decisions actually had some rigor and science apply applied to them, so that when you did get to the go to market committee or the pricing governance committee, that you could say you know you could stand over the assumptions you were making in your business case um, to say well hang on you know we actually did go out and ask the target customers uh, and you know so these these weren't just picked picked out of the air plucked out of the air. Uh, in terms of assumptions, price, price, you know, willingness to pay, and and, and whatnot. Um, so, so that's what I really wanted because my my primary role there was to bring best practice pricing tools, skills, and processes to the group operations. Um, and I really, really wanted to bring Conjoint in, but I couldn't find a, a provider who could who could do it on a provide that service on a on a on a you know, an agile basis, uh, enough of an agile basis to, to get the buy-in from the local markets. Um, uh, and that, that kind of got me then starting to look into it in more detail. I said, because I obviously understood it was, you know, pretty sophisticated algorithms underpinning conjoint analysis. Um, but the more people I spoke to in terms of academics, um, actually one of the, one of the, one of the, uh, 
one of the professors in, in Columbia University was one, um, uh, and, and practitioners and, and statisticians, I realized that, that you, could, you could box off that complexity in a back end and by putting an intuitive front end, and, and what I meant was you know, intuitive to pricing and product and commercial marketing people, let's say, uh, we could inject uh, a lot more speed and you know, arguably user friendliness into, into the conjoint process. Uh, and, and, and also then the byproduct of that was um, you know, much, much more cost-effective uh, conjoint, uh, conjoint analysis. Yeah, I have to say that I really enjoy using it. So, so what do you think is the, the most common use of Epic Conjoint? When you think about Crusher customers, what's the, the key decision they're trying to make? Yeah, um, I, you know, and this is something we're trying to, because actually, you take a step back, you know, choi- underpinning this is choice-based analysis. And as humans, we, you know, we really don't like to make any decision, but particularly a purchase decision without some kind of a compare and contrast or a, a benchmark. And that's what, uh, that's what underpins conjoint, uh, conjoint analysis. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's such an intuitive way of teasing out. And, you know, we're, we're going through exercises now, com- you know, clients are requesting Van Vestendorf and, and, why we why we can do it and offer it we it, it it's it doesn't sit very easy with us in terms of it's just not a natural way of posing a purchase decision um, uh, or it's not a natural purchase decision environment if you stack it against uh, if you stack it against conjoint uh, van Vestendorf and a conjoint uh, mm-hmm. against each other um, so it, it's 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 a very, um, in terms of the broad, you know, just taking it, taking it again, kind of taking a step back. Uh, it's it's helping clients in terms of most applications we find, and I'm talking about probably eighty to ninety percent are new products and services. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is actually there are a lot more use cases that you can apply conjoint to because it is a trade-off uh, a tech, uh, a methodology. Um, so, so for example, um, you know, applying it in a competitive context. So one of your competitors launches a, a threat, a new product or drops their prices. Um, you can conjoint that pretty, pretty quickly to understand, well, is this, how significant is this threat um, to to our business, to our customers. What do our customers think about it? What are their customers? And in that play, context, you can make um, you know educated decisions as to whether you need to react or not. Um, I you know my experience, and I'd love to know it's the listeners' experience in the, in the pricing role. You know, it always was a Friday afternoon when a competitor, a Vodafone launched a new product or service or, or, or a three or whatever. The, and, and, you know, there, there goes your weekend. You were in scramble mode to try and uh, try and understand, you know, what this meant, what this, you know, would mean for the, for the business, for the customers. Um, uh, and that was always at the back of my mind, you know, with Conjure, to, get, to give that speed and agility to actually say, oh, hang on, okay, I see they've done this. I'm going to take that that new product they've just launched. I'm going to pop it into my competitive concept matrix. Um, I have my own product. I have the other competitors' products in there. uh, And I'll run this over the weekend. And on Monday morning, first thing, I'll have the results of the survey. So then now I can go to my superiors and stakeholders and say, hang on, we've assessed this. The customers think this or, you know, this is something we need to worry about uh, and look at some war gaming exercises, which by the way, is, is another use case for conjoint, or we put this on a watching brief. Um, yeah. So, so that's, that's what I'm trying to educate clients to say, hang on a second. It's not just for new products and services. It's, you know, you can keep an eye on the existing context. Another use case, Mark would be, yeah. sorry. I was just gonna say, I find conjoint so powerful, but my favorite use case or my favorite use for it is I want to put a dollar value on each attribute. 
right? I love being able to say, this is how much this attribute is worth to my marketplace or to that market segment or to that individual. Yeah. I yeah. just, I think that's an amazing capability. Yeah. And that's, you know, look, when we get to the stage where we're reviewing results and that's what we like to do because, you know, that's what I love to do because my, my background is pricing, but actually, you know, you know, in the results dashboard with, with the clients rolling up the sleeves, they get really excited by the power of being able to, you know, select that drop down list, change it from 12, 12 megapixels to 40 megapixels. What does that mean to the optimal price and the unwillingness to pay? Oh, actually, you could charge another $50 uh, by going from a 12 megapixel to a 40 megapixel camera in that smartphone. Yeah, so they, they look at that, that's that, and, and you know, clients love, and that's where we give the access, we give them the access then to go in and start splicing and dice because very often the gems, the inside gems, um, are, are below the averages. So when you start to filter based on various segments, demo segments, yep. spend segments, then the little inside gems can pop out uh, and give you that, that, uh, that, that, that target to uh, maybe differentiate yourself. Um, yeah, and that, be that becomes really obvious when you look at the data that you had created for us, right? There was a phone survey that you did for us and we were able to, uh, to, to dig down and say, well, what's the difference between a Apple customer and a Samsung customer? And what decisions do they make? And what do they perceive? And I mean, it was just so powerful to be able to do that on my own and just click through and look at the analytics. So yeah, yeah. And the other, obviously, for the audience, you know, the price sensitivity, we capture that price sensitivity as well at a segment level. So and you do see it, you can see that change. Yeah, it's um, through, fascinating. Throughout. Okay. We're going to run out of time, Matt. So I got to ask a really important question. Um, I am often asked the question, Oh, it is conjoint work for B2B. I'm going to let you answer the question. I know how I would answer it, but I'm going to let you answer it. <laughs> uh, very much so. Um, ultimately, it's, 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 it's the supplier and the customer um, relationship. Pricing is critical in most cases. Um, and yes, we conduct many uh, B2B conjoint surveys for across many sectors. Um, and it's good in the context where you have a middleman, a supplier, or a distributor who is saying, oh, you need to drop the price. You need to drop the price. It's not selling. It's not selling. It's good to leapfrog them and go to the end customer. Do your contract and say, hang on a second. It's not a pricing issue here. It's actually a, a distribution issue or a channel issue or a particular feature of the product. And we can address that. But it's certainly not the price. price, uh, price. So... It, it keeps it keeps it can keep the middle the middle tier uh, the middlemen honest um, and even yeah. even within the organized sales even within your organization the sales the sales folks it can keep them honest too where you can leapfrog them and actually check and see what exactly the customers are saying. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that conjoint has a hundred different applications, right? I mean, it really does. It's so powerful, but I think you see it in new products most often because that's the hardest thing for companies to do, right? What are the features I should put in? How much should I charge when I launch the product? It's such a hard set of decisions where you could take any other decision. One of my favorites is uh, what's the best marketing message to use, right? And, and so you can take any of those decisions and say, yeah, but I could kind of guess at the answer or I could do a survey and maybe get close. And, and, and so I think people don't, don't think through Wow, conjoint would be a much better way to go solve that problem to go understand yeah. it. And and for what essentially a conjoint is, is it's like an insurance policy. It's a, you know how close to the truth can you get than going out to ask the customer and using a methodology that is to statistic proven to be statistically significant. Um, you know that, that you can you know the comfort and the confidence of launching then new products or price making price changes. Um, having done a conjoint is having been in that situation is, 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 is priceless. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Matt, we're going to have to wrap this up, but a uh, final question for you. What's one piece of pricing advice you would give our listeners that you think could have a big impact on their business? Uh, ask the customer, ask the customer. Don't, you know, while the, 
it's, it's always very important to look at the transactional data, you know, the behavioral data, the previous data. Uh, that will inform your assumptions, but then cap it off with, uh, by asking the customer. What do they think? What are they willing to pay? Um, that, that reassurance is, is, you know, you just can't put a price on that. Yeah. So first off, I'm going to agree with you completely in that too often we think we know what our market is thinking. And so we just make decisions or make assumptions. And, and in truth, we're clueless. Yeah, Go talk yeah. to your market. I, uh, and then I'm going to make a caveat. You did say, ask them what's they're willing to pay. And I'm sure you didn't mean ask them how much are you willing to pay? I'm sure you meant no. find out using yeah. other techniques. Subliminally, yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, and that's where the kind of the, fall, the Van Vestendorf kind of falls down, I, I, I believe, but um, vis-a-vis conjoint. But yeah, it's, 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 um, it's, that's, for me, it's the reassurance and the confidence that that brings as a pricing, you know, because when you work in these organizations, you have a lot of responsibility. Uh, the pricing role is, is highly, is not, and, it, and it's not compensated for the, d- the degree of responsibility that's given. Uh, but that's, that's another day's uh, conversation. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it is huge. So Matt, thank you so much for your time today. If anybody wants to contact you, how can they do that? Okay, sure. Uh, well, my LinkedIn, um, our Epic Conjoint, we have our own LinkedIn page. Um, or uh, the website, epicconjoint.com, all one word, dot com, um, or Matt Johnston at epicconjoint.com. Sounds great. Episode 118 is all done. Uh, this is the moment of the podcast when I beg you listeners to leave a review for me. Apple Podcasts doesn't make it easy to find and figure out how to do it, but they're so valuable to us. And please know you're doing a huge favor if you go through that effort. Finally, if you have any questions or comments about the podcast or about pricing in general, feel free to email me, mark at impactpricing.com. Now, go make an impact. Thanks again to our sponsor, Epic Conjoint, a simple and fast way to learn how your buyers value your products.